Alright, if you've seen my previous video on how to obtain Apple II software, um, you can now watch this one. I'm going to show you exactly what's needed to make a disk image. It's very simple. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to erase a used 720K or 800K floppy disk. And we're going to do that by booting our Apple II GS with either Copy 2 Plus or System Utilities, either one. Copy 2 Plus boots into this screen here, and uh, do you want an 80 column catalog display? Yes, I do. Okay. Now we're going to select the Format option, Format Disk, select ProDOS, Slot 5 Drive 1 in my case, which is the drive that my system disk is in, and we're going to pop in just a regular old 800k floppy disk. And go ahead and format it. Destroy blank, yes. Blank. This one was already formatted, but this is for demonstration purposes only. While we're running this uh, format utility, I'm going to go ahead and set up my emulator. The emulator that I'm using is called Bernie to the Rescue. And it runs an OS up to OS 9, will not run on OS 10. Now the reason I use this emulator, and I'm using it on a PowerBook G3 with a classic OS and a 3.5 inch floppy drive, is because I couldn't run the, um, uh, I could, the OS 10 version won't mount a real Apple II disk. See, OS 9 has the ability to mount a ProDOS disk, whereas OS 10 will not do it. So, we're going to go ahead and put this Copy 2 Plus, the same one I used on the Apple II GS. We're going to pop that into our drive here. And what happens is, when you run the emulator, it takes over the floppy drive. It's kind of cool. But once we'll, we'll let the disk mount first. There it goes. And as you can see, OS 9 is natively capable of reading all the files and everything. Very cool. So let's go ahead and start the emulator. Bernie to the rescue. Now this requires no installation. You can actually run it from a CD. Oh, there it goes. And as you can see, it latches onto the 3.5 inch floppy drive. And it is now booting from it. You have the same screen that we got on the, uh, the real Apple II. Yes, I want the edit column. All right. Next thing we have to do is we have to mount our disk images. Now, I've already downloaded all of my disk images, and I've placed them on a CD, which I've already copied to the hard drive locally. So we're going to locate, select Mount Disk, and I've already navigated to the directory where they're stored. Why don't we go ahead and try Police Quest? This is a computer game that was very popular. This is a two-disc set. So we're going to... Why don't we try a, a smaller one here? Grand Prix Circuit. Is that... Yeah, we'll try that one. So we've got our formatted disc. Oh. Real quick. Let's just mount our disc image here. The next thing we have to do is insert the blank disc into the floppy drive. So we're going to eject by going to File and Eject Disk Select. This gives you all the virtual drives and the physical ones. Built-in drive. This is our boot disk. We don't need this anymore. So we're going to take our blank disk out of the Apple II. Pop it into the drive. Okay, once the disk activity stops, we're going to go ahead and select the copy option, which is the very first option. We're going to select disk only. Disk with format doesn't seem to work very well on the emulator. We're going to select our, now we're going to do the question mark to display the volume names. And as you can see, device 1 or drive 1 is called blank. Device 2 is GPC, which is the game that I've mounted. So it shows you all, you can mount as many disks as you want with the emulator, it's very useful. 
We're going to select drive 2 as our source and drive 1 as our destination. I've already put my blank disk in so I can do return to continue. Now it's going to read and simultaneously write to the disk. Seems to be working. Now we're going to go ahead and, uh, well, we'll wait until this is done. I was having some difficulties initially with this because my floppy drive was failing. Luckily I have three floppy drives for the uh, G3 Kanga, which is good for me. <laughs> if you do not have a PowerPC machine running OS 8 or 9, um, there are other ways to make these disks um, using the OS 10 emulator. And there's supposedly a way to do it using a Windows machine, but I haven't found out it, it took me about four hours to figure this out. And then a light bulb went off in my head and said, Oh, why don't I try using a real bona fide power PC? And it worked. By that I mean a classic, I refer to the power PC as a classic Mac, and vice versa. But I was able to download almost every application and program that I used as a kid. All the ones I had all that fun with. The Apple II HDS is a very capable system. It has excellent graphics and excellent sound for what it is. Uh, for that for that uh, time period, anyway. Okay, we're done. It'll ask you to do another one. We're just going to hit no and uh, go ahead and eject device one. Pop it in the drive. And we're going to restart this Mac. We'll do control reset or not bastard all right do it this way quit press reset to reboot there we go now doing five and a quarter inch discs would be nearly impossible um, the Mac OS is incapable of mounting a five and a quarter inch disc. Word of the wise. Um, so as far as making that happen, I don't, I don't see that as a possibility. So the other option is you could do it using um, an Apple II GS or something with a three and a half inch disc. So if I had a three and a half inch disc on my 2E and I found some good 2E ROMs, I'm sure that would work just fine. Here we go. Looks like we had a successful copy. Make sure when you download the emulator, download ROM 1. Most 2Es, or 2GSs, use ROM 1 anyway. You have an option. As you can see, the graphics, I mean, it even has good voice quality sound. I mean, look at these graphics. This is equivalent to a Nintendo NES, uh, Super NES, just about. Let's do a practice. This is amazing. Prepare to practice. Now it's going to load the scenery. 
Uh, it looks like we're out of time. Until then, if you have any questions, feel free to ask.